Hello from the Oosterhout Free Library, where I'm Miss Melissa, bringing you the third part of Mrs. Barr Has Gone Too Far by Dan Gutman, illustrated by Jim Pala, published from Harper. The guest teacher, Mrs. Barr, is trying to teach them geography, whether they want it or not. Meanwhile, they're starting to wonder what she's doing there. Let's talk about water, said Mrs. Barr. Did you know that water covers more than two thirds of the earth? Blah, blah. She went on about water for a million hundred minutes. I was starting to feel sleepy again. Blah, blah. The Nile is the longest river in the world. Blah, blah, blah. Over 4,000 miles long and blah. I felt my eyelids had 10 pound weights on them. Blah, blah. Antarctica is the coldest continent. Blah, it's the only continent that gets larger and smaller as it freezes and melts and blah. Antarctica, Antarctica, Antarctica. The next thing I knew, I was having a wild dream. I'm in Antarctica. There are no schools here. Nobody has to learn stuff. Nobody has to wear a tie or go to tea parties. There are no bedtimes and no Andrea. Nobody is making fun of me. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do in Antarctica. I'm eating frozen pizza because all the pizza is frozen here. I'm running around and playing freeze tag because that's the only kind of tag you can play in Antarctica. My friends are a family of penguins. Tag, you're it. There are lots of water slides and theme parks and candy stores here. You don't have to buy anything. Everything is free. All the toilet bowls are upside down. Wake up, AJ, said Mr. Cooper. Huh? What? I picked my head up off the desk. Mrs. Barr was gone. So were all the kids. Where is everybody, I asked. They went to the art room, Mr. Cooper told me. You were sleeping so peacefully, I didn't want to wake you. Mr. Cooper and I went to the art room. Our art teacher, Miss Hannah, was in there with Mrs. Barr and all the kids. They were sitting at a big table and there were feathers, beads, glue, and other art stuff scattered around. Did you have a nice nap, Arlo? asked Andrea. I ignored her. What are you guys doing? I asked. We're making masks, said Miss Hannah. Different cultures and countries all over the world have worn masks, said Mrs. Barr. For example, in China, Africa, Australia, Mexico, Brazil. Uh-oh. She was trying to teach us about geography again. Masks have been used as disguises or for protection, entertainment, or in religious ceremonies, said Mrs. Barr. I wasn't paying attention. The oldest mask in the world dates back to 8300 BCE, said Mrs. Barr. I couldn't take it anymore. I'm not going to learn anything about masks, I announced. I'm not falling for that old trick again. You don't have to learn anything, Miss Hannah told me. You can just make a mask for the fun of it. I'm making a carnival mask, said Alexa. I'm making a surgical mask, said Neil. I'm making a hockey mask, said Michael. You can make any kind of mask you want, said Miss Hannah. Be creative. Use your imaginations. The student who makes my favorite mask wins a prize, said Mrs. Barr. Ooh, I love prizes, said Andrea. What's the prize, asked Ryan. The prize is that I will wear your mask for the rest of the week, said Mrs. Barr. That was a weird prize, but everybody was hard at work on their masks. I didn't know what kind of mask to make. Maybe I was still groggy from my nap. The other kids were almost finished. I didn't want to make a dumb mask. Five more minutes, announced Miss Hannah. Then it's cleanup time. Finally, the time was up. All I had was a plain black mask. What's your mask, dude? Asked Michael. You didn't put anything on it. AJ, your mask is lame, said Neil. All the kids were laughing like my mask was the funniest thing in the history of the world. Well, I happen to like AJ's mask, said Miss Hannah. It's simple, and sometimes in art, less is more. I think AJ's mask is cool, said Mrs. Barr. You win the prize, AJ. May I wear your mask for the rest of the week? 
Sure, I said. Everybody stopped laughing. Ha! In their face, I made the best mask. So na na boo boo on everybody. Happy International Day, Mrs. Barr said when I came to class the next morning. She was wearing the mask I made. What's International Day, I asked. Each of you is going to choose a country, said Mrs. Barr. Any country in the world. You'll spend the morning learning about your country. Then you'll give a short presentation to the class as if you were the leader of that country. Doesn't that sound like fun? Yes, said all the girls. No, said all the boys. I think it's a great idea, said Mr. Cooper. The kids will learn a lot. Plus, they can practice their research and public speaking skills. Sounded like a horrible idea to me. Learning, research, public speaking? I thought I was going to die. Andrea was so excited she could hardly stay in her seat. My country is going to be... But she didn't have a chance to finish her sentence. Shh, said Mrs. Barr. Don't tell us the name of your country until it's time for your presentation. Let's make it a surprise. I love surprises, said Andrea. Me too, said Emily. We walked a million hundred miles to the computer lab, where there was a computer set up for each of us. Mrs. Barr passed out pads and pencils so we could take notes about our country. Andrea got permission to use her smartphone because she has to be a big show off all the time. What should we look up? asked Ryan. Search for interesting facts about your country, said Mrs. Barr. Where is it located? What do people wear? What do they eat? What language do they speak? Things like that. Everybody started looking stuff up. Well, everybody but me. I couldn't think of a country I wanted to learn about. Ryan was sitting next to me. He leaned over to see what his country was. No peeking at other people's computers, said Mrs. Barr. We want it to be a surprise when you give your presentation. I was bored. I looked up a bunch of stuff about football. Did you know that a guy with only half a foot once kicked a 63-yard field goal? It's true. Go ahead, look it up if you don't believe me. Isn't it wonderful, Mrs. Barr said as we were all looking up stuff. Maybe someday all the nations of the world will work together like this so people can live in peace and harmony. Everybody worked hard all the way to lunchtime. Well, everybody except me. I learned a lot about football. After lunch, we went back to Mr. Cooper's class. Okay, who wants to give the first International Day presentation? Asked Mrs. Barr. I do, shouted Andrea, of course. Go ahead. She rushed up to the front of the room with her notes. She couldn't wait to show how smart she was. I'm the queen of Norway, Andrea said. My country is in Northern Europe. It's a little bigger than New Mexico. We are one of the largest seafood producers in the world. Why is everybody always talking about fish, I wondered. More than five million people live in my country, she continued. We speak Norwegian and we have 29 letters in our alphabet. Our capital city is Oslo. Our national animal is the moose, and blah, blah, blah. What a snooze fest. They shouldn't call that country Norway. They should call it Borway. She went on for a million hundred minutes. I wasn't really listening. I just wanted her to keep talking until dismissal, so I wouldn't have to give a presentation. And that's why we eat reindeer meatballs in Norway. Very good, said Mr. Cooper. You certainly taught us a lot about Norway. Who wants to go next? We all stared at the floor. How about you, AJ? said Mr. Cooper. Oh, no, not me. Next time, we'll see how AJ does in his presentation. I, I have a feeling it's not going to be great. Bye-bye.